Hey, it's Eric G. Around the House is sponsored by Baldwin Hardware. For 75 years, Baldwin Hardware has been known for its first class quality and craftsmanship in door and cabinetry hardware. As an alumnus of the Baldwin Hardware Design Council, I can say I have seen the details and quality from design to the finished product. If you're looking for a new style and old world craftsmanship, I can tell you there is only one Baldwin Hardware. Check out what would look great in your home at baldwinhardware.com. It's Around the House. When it comes to remodeling and renovating your home, there is a lot to know, but we've got you covered. This is Around the House. Welcome to the Around the House show. This is where we help you get the most out of your home through information and education. Thanks for joining us today. Well, I wanted to dive into uh, a subject that I heard on the, well, I heard on the radio and saw on the TV this last week. And people are talking about no mo may, which started over in England, but basically you don't mow your lawn for an entire month, the month of May. So that way you give more, um, you know, more flowers and stuff and weeds, you know, that, that go for the honeybees. And so this started out, like I said, over in England, and they basically are trying to get people to not mow their lawn the entire month of May. So first off, Let's get really clear here before we get too far into this. Check your local HOA and your local building codes. I know of a city that I used to live in here in Washington State when I lived over there that if I didn't mow my lawn for a few weeks and it got too tall, I had a fine show up in the mail. So I don't want to see anybody get fined as well as I want to make sure that you're following your HOA rules before we get too deep into this because I don't want this costing people a bunch of money, having to go to court, getting fines, that kind of stuff. So let's let's get that out of the way first. So really make sure and check with that. And, you know, adopt, if you're going to adopt it in your community, then, you know, talk to those leaders as well and see if you can do it. Uh, it could be something that the, uh, that they just don't want to do. And I get it. So, well, here's, you know, no mome is a, you know, that's super catchy, little phrase there, but here's the thing. This is to help honeybees. And before we get into honeybees, I want to talk about the elephant in the room here. And I love honeybees. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I love honey. Uh, I have no problem with them, but let's be honest. Honeybees are not native to North America. They were originally imported from Europe in the 17th century. Honeybees now help pollinate U.S. crops, you know, like fruits, nuts, you know, and so it's really good, but it's interesting when people freak out over critical honeybee populations in the U.S. have been declining. Keep in mind, they were never designed or, or had never lived here in the United States. So this is actually, you know, in most things, they in most areas, if we brought something else in, they would call that an invasive species. And I'm not saying that honeybees are, but... You could, you could make that argument that uh, they weren't intentionally supposed to be here to begin with. They hadn't lived here. Somebody had brought them on a ship over from Europe and said, hey, let's uh, let's get some honey over here. So um, I got a feeling that most of us around here were uh, dealing with wasps and hornets. Now, there are different bees and stuff around. So, you know, there are about two, over two, 20, well, geez, 20,000 known bee species in the world. And 4,000 of them are native to the United States. So there's a lot of different bees out there. But I'm just talking about the big honey bees that everybody's been freaking out about. So that's an interesting t- a subject. And where did I get that from? That information came from the U.S. Geological Survey. So this isn't some weird thing there. That is the, uh, the cold hard facts about honey bees. So really, if you're not going to do that, just, you know, watch out your avoid, avoid your pesticides And uh, really try to not hurt the bees out there. You know, if you don't want to mow your lawn and you want to have a a more natural thing and it's legal in your area, then enjoy it. Um, Am I going to be participating in it? No. No, I'd much rather have flowers and stuff around all year long and do it by planting than worry about two or three or six different dandelions are in my lawn and then having to go back and use weed killer because I've let them 
get out there and grow and get bigger. So I like what they're doing. Uh, I'm going to go about a different way and just make sure that I've got lots of, uh, lots of flowers out there that would be more than what I would have in my yard. Um, I'm just not going to go that route with it. So up to you. But if you want to enjoy no mo may, enjoy yourself. Just make sure you're legal when you're doing it. All right, now on our weekly recalls here, Stanley Black and Decker recalls 2.2 million DeWalt, Stanley, and Craspin fiberglass sledgehammers due to impact injury hazard. So uh, they say that the head of the sledgehammer can loosen prematurely and detach unexpectedly during use. Uh, consumers should immediately stop using the recalled sledgehammers and contact Stanley Black and Decker for instructions to receive a full refund. So there are 2.2 million of these out there and about 53,000 in Canada. So something to look at there. That's kind of a big one. So watch it. If you've got a, those brand sledgehammers that are the fiberglass handle, I'd go over to the cpsc.gov and follow the directions as well. And then there is a DynaDrive freshwater well pump recall due to risk of electric shock manufactured by Davy Water Products. And so there is a, a ground issue there. So do not attempt to turn the pumps off, change settings in the pumps, inspect to repair the pumps, or otherwise touch the pumps. Uh, consumers should register their pumps on Davy's website to schedule a free inspection to verify the connections are cor- correctly grounded and, if necessary, repair the grounding. So uh, you can do that over at dvwater.com and find it over there. It's only about 1,060 of them, so it's not a huge number over there, but it's something to really take a peek at because uh, you always want those things to be grounded. That could be its own issue. And then everything else we talked about last week. So if you ever want to know on the recalls uh, that are out there in the United States, for us here, that is the Consumer Product Safety Commission. You can head over to cpsc.gov and... uh, just to keep an eye on that. Now, I wanted to have a quick talk. We're going to talk about it this weekend a little bit, but I want to talk about there's a lot of snow melt going across the country right now, and we do have a lot of areas that I think are going to be uh, flooding along big rivers. So, uh, you know, a lot of snow coming out of the Sierra Nevadas, a lot of snow up in the Midwest. I know uh, my son up in North Dakota has had a record amount of snow up there or nearly a record amount of snow. That all has to go someplace. So now's the time, if you are in a flood-prone area, I would take a couple extra steps and just get ahead of it. Getting ahead of it means if you know where the water is going to come from, might as well get the sandbags going. I think it's going to be a smart idea to get ahead of this. You know, if you can uh, legally do some landscaping to help direct water, man, it's a good time to do that. And if you can do anything to help protect your house or property, uh, make sure you can do that. It might not also be a bad time to uh, check on your insurance and make sure that you've got that where you want it to. But as soon as they start putting out flood warnings and stuff, guess what? Uh, Probably too late to make those changes on a homeowner's insurance or a flood insurance. And then also take the advice of professionals that we've talked to. Go back and listen to some of our shows here in the past that have talked about insurance stuff. Be careful how you make claims. If you have, you know, downspouts that have leaked into the basement, um, that is one thing. Be careful using in any time that you're making an insurance claim the word flood unless the water outside the building has risen up and come in. It's most likely a broken pipe or a broken storm drain or something like that versus a flood. A flood usually means that a river bank has gone over or a lake and it has surrounded your house and then created water that was above what the structure is. So be very careful when you call your insurance company if you have to make claims on what you call a flood, because that can be a bigger deal. And so be very careful with that one. Uh, You could put yourself into a lot of headaches just by trying to describe it using common language that your insurance company is not going to want to hear you using. So just be careful with that, because uh, uh, many times you can get dropped for using the word flood when it wasn't a flood, and then you fight a big battle just trying to get that taken care of. So something to be careful with. All right. Well, coming up this weekend on Around the House, uh, we're going to have some great show ahead here. We're going to be talking about all the questions that you guys have sent in. And if you have questions that you want to have answered, there's two ways to do this. Head over to aroundthehouseonline.com or head over to uh, my TV station that uh, my show is broadcast, which is uh, go to kptv.com. And if you go over to the Around the House Northwest page over there, if you want to end up being on my TV show, there's an easy way to do it. 
Head over to, uh, you'll see this thing where it says Ad Media on kptv.com around the house Northwest. And uh, Ad Media is a little burst page where you can add a video question. And if you do that with your question, you might be able to have your your question on the show. So let's uh, see if you can come up uh, with some good questions for me. I'd love to bring in our listeners into this uh, show so you guys can have some fun with that. So, all right, everybody, have a great rest of the week. Happy midweek special today. Hope this answered a few of your questions on uh, No Mo May. I know it's it's a crazy one. So uh, not a bad idea, and that's up to you to handle. All right, guys, thanks for listening around the house. We'll see you on Saturday. Always appreciate you tuning in. It's Eric G. from Around the House. Are you planning a decking or siding project this year? If you are, you've got to check out my friends at Millboard. Millboard is a completely different kind of composite decking and cladding that enhances outdoor spaces with enduring distinction. Hand molded from the finest oak, it realistically mimics the natural grain and color of premium hardwood. If you're looking for something that doesn't look like plastic and instead real wood, check out millboard.com. Make sure and check out that interview we did just a few weeks back. That's millboard.com.